Sophie, Riser, the viewers like your games, so I don't know, let's find another Atelier-like experience to share with them, but something that might have slipped by the radar when it first released. You got any thoughts? Check the subreddit! Oh, you're absolutely right. When in doubt, just check the Atelier subreddit. Five minutes later. Mm-hmm. Thank you, ladies. You have helped me out once again. Where would I be without you? I'm always on the prowl for those feel-good palette cleanser JRPGs, and I think I've managed to find another one. A game that has no dedicated wiki, very little promotional material, nor does it have any walkthroughs. It's called Nora Totoki no Kobo, Kiri no Mori no Majo, translated into English as Nora and the Time Studio, The Witch of the Misty Forest. It was developed and published by Atlas in 2011 for the Nintendo DS, but unfortunately never came west. However, thanks to a fan translation that released in April of this year, Western audiences are now able to play it to a satisfactory standard. One of the main objectives I have for this channel is that I share games that I believe you guys will enjoy. If it's a hidden gem, all the better. As such, this video will simply be a review of Nora and the Time Studio and will not be a guide on how to set the game up. That being said, I will link the original Reddit post that made me aware of this translation and then if you watch this review and feel it might be worth playing yourself, then I'll leave that to your discretion. With that out the way, let's dive into what can only be described as Atlas's attempt at an Atelier-style game. And mentioning Atelier here is not just for show. Not only did it involve Shinji Yoshiike, scenario writer for the likes of Atelier Iris and the first Atelier Riser, but anyone who has played the first Sophie game, for example, will notice some stark similarities between the two. The premise is that Nora Brandor, our protagonist, has left her hometown to study the art of chronomancy. And in order to hone her skills, she has to live in a cottage within the Misty Forest for three years as a rite of passage. This cottage is the same one her grandmother used during her own journey of ascension, a woman who acts as an inspiration for Nora herself. See, I told you it was similar to Sophie. However, upon entering the nearby town, Nora is mistaken for a witch due to her outfit, and as such, she experiences prejudice from the townsfolk who are distrustful of her perceived kin. Resolved to earn the town's blessing, she decides to not only hone her skills, but also assist them through the use of chronomancy, fulfilling requests and helping individuals with their problems. And this is pretty much the premise of the entire game. You live out three years fulfilling requests while improving your chronomancy, but as such, there isn't really a story to be had here. You get some background on the world, a bit of exposition here and there, but the stakes are notably low throughout. It's more a slice-of-life adventure witnessing the growth of Nora firsthand. Even the potential stressor of the three-year deadline, which normally would be a deal-breaker for me, didn't actually have any effect on my enjoyment, probably because said timer was never stated or looming over me. You get periodic milestones at the turn of seasons along with your save stamp stating where the time period falls under, but this mechanic doesn't feel like a burden most of the time. However, because it's kept under wraps, it does somewhat act as a double-edged sword. Once the three years are up, the game will abruptly end. Fortunately, the playtime is super short. I finished my first run in 10 hours, my second in 8, and my final one in 7. And each time I got a separate ending, which could easily be categorised into a bad, normal, and true ending. There might be a secret ending that I'm unaware of, but I'm content with what I got. And replaying the game is not a problem, because Nora and the Time Studio never feels like a chore. It's actually a very charming game in many ways. In terms of presentation, for example, it's one of the best looking DS games I can remember off the top of my head, with character sprites drawn by Yuji Humukai, an artist involved with the likes of Etrian Odyssey and Shin Megami Tensei. There's a wide array of colour, and the environments, though sparse in terms of what you explore, are well designed. I will also say that the music reflects the comfortable adventure on offer here, with Michiko Naruke doing a great job in composing a score that matches the ambience of the game. However, the real draw of Nora comes in its very simple yet gratifying gameplay loop, split into some key elements. Initially, Nora must first gather materials and create tools to fulfil the separate processes relating to chronomancy. By leaving her cottage, the player is put onto an overmap where they can choose a zone to gather said items. Upon entering, the bottom DS screen acts as the medium of collecting the materials, with a stylus used to pick nodes. Each node will also use up time, so it's important to be efficient in these gathering excursions too, picking nodes for the items that you actually need. There are also mini-events represented by squares on the top right, which hint at lower encounter rates, higher level enemies, or more plentiful quantities from sparkling nodes. It's a very simple gathering mechanic, but it's done intentionally. Gathering is a side event as compared to the main attraction, as is the combat, which is what you will also partake in periodically as you gather. 
Combat takes place via an isometric view, with the player taking control of a max of three characters in a turn-based format. The formation of the characters can also be changed so that a front line and back line can be formed to prevent the more fragile characters meeting a quick end. Every character has the choice to attack, use an item, use their skills, or flee the battle. However, it's once again easy to grasp. Though characters will gradually become more powerful over time as they level up and thus gain new abilities, the onus is more on having a good balance of items to circumvent any situation. Items created via Chronomancy can be used to attack over wide areas, buff party members for the more challenging foes, or even summon more enemies to get experience or find specific items. However, what Nora lacks in mechanical combat depth, it more than makes up for in its plentiful cast of characters to choose from. It's encouraged in this game to talk to as many NPCs as possible, marked by the speech bubbles when a new event is available. By talking to them, new areas can open up, character-specific events might take place, or some might even join Nora when she goes to gather, and each character has a notable role they fulfil not only when gathering but also in battle. As such, it offers a higher level of player choice, and more importantly, the wide array of characters adds to the replayability value. Going on these excursions with characters will raise Nora's affinity with the members, and every time a milestone is reached, she is able to interact with them in some way. These lead to some low-key yet sweet moments between the individuals, allowing players to relate to this birth of charming characters. Through my three playthroughs, I was able to see five character arcs to the very end, and they were all worth the time spent. Having notable differences between each other, and also sporting some nice CG cutscenes in between as an added bonus. It's once again limited a bit by the three-year cycle, as realistically you can only see two, maybe three character arcs through to the end per playthrough, but again, these don't take too long, so it's a small concession. However, progressing these character arcs also has the ability to enrich chronomancy, and just like alchemy and atelier, it's this key mechanic that the whole game is designed around. The cottage is where you'll be spending the majority of your time. In here, Nora is able to take her materials to dismantle, process, or transform them into something entirely new at the expense of days. For example, smashing a rock will allow her to harvest a key component in Crota's solution, but also yield stones that she can break down further or potentially use as a weapon in combat. Many items within the game will have multiple development stages tied to them, with time acting as the main cornerstone of the system. Nora may, for instance, create some bread, but by using chronomancy, she can push the spread further on in time so that it becomes so stale that it can be used in combat. Or for example with cheese, she can create a curd and then with the right level of chrono solution she can make it mature, thus making it more effective as a healing item. This doesn't just apply to pushing time forward, she will also eventually gain the ability to reverse time. Books for example that may be completely useless due to being in poor condition can be reversed back in time to a point where it becomes easily readable. Once again, it's a simple system, but my goodness it's addicting. And this is probably where my biggest problem with Nora lies. It has such an enjoyable crafting mechanic on offer, but you have a limited time to work with it. Sure, it means that the player has to be more careful with how they use their time, but there were plenty of moments where I just wanted to get stuck into the system and see what I could make without thinking of efficiency. I will also say that as the recipes become more numerous as you approach the end of the game, navigating the UI can become more tedious. I wish there was some way to categorise items or pin the more common materials so I didn't need to keep scrolling through. But despite these minor flaws, it's a very entertaining system, propped up by excellent pacing. There was always something that would open up, and if I seemingly hit a brick wall with chronomancy, that was my cue to go back into towns and see if any new recipe books or side events were available. Needless to say, chronomancy is also your gateway to stronger equipment. Though, generally, you won't be making the items yourself, you will need to provide the raw materials to do so, and progression as a result feels meaningful and tangible. Stronger equipment naturally allows you to explore more dangerous environments, which feeds into even better better items and equipment, which deepens your armoury of item possibilities via chronomancy, which contributes to helping characters to the conclusion of their character arcs. Everything is intrinsically linked in Nora and the Time Studio, no mechanic feels wasted, and this consistent sense of progression meant that the game felt well paced, but most importantly, fun to work with. It's a shame that Nora and the Time Studio never found its way to Western Shores. I honestly think this would have been a sleeper hit if it got more care before its release. Coming out near the end of the DS's life cycle and its lack of promotional material took a pretty heavy toll on the commercial success of the game, but that is by no means a consequence of its quality. I think anyone who wants that comfortable palate cleanser in between their more arduous adventures a la Atelier will find a lot to love with Nora and the Time Studio. Thank you for watching this video, if you want more JRPG goodness please like and subscribe and consider joining my Patreon if you're interested. Peace!